All right, covering America, what's in it for you? We're devoting this entire hour to health care reform. We already know that a House committee has already voted on a bill before this August recess, and the Senate will be adjourning in about a week with no vote as far as we know. So we are joined right now by two lawmakers who can give us an idea of what should this reform package actually look like in the end. Georgia Representative Republican Phil Gingry is with us. He's also a physician. He's joining us. And also New York Congressman uh, Elliot Engel is joining us as well. So uh, you were actually, uh, Mr. Engel, on this uh, Energy and Commerce Committee, right? Did you vote in favor of this bill or not? Yes, I am on the committee and I voted in favor of the bill. And I think uh, the American people uh, need to know that health care reform is on the way and it's going to be good for all segments of the American public. Okay, so if you could, uh, Congressman Engel, in about 45 seconds, give me your best sell about the kind of health reform package that you're hoping Congress will pass that uninsured Americans will be able to enjoy. Well, first of all, as we know, there are 47 million Americans who are uninsured, and that continues to grow. Of those 47 million Americans, 80% of them are working people and their families. So it's a national scandal that we have that many people uninsured. Uh, our plan would insure virtually everyone in the country. Uh, it would say that uh, doctors and, and hospitals uh, couldn't reject you because of pre-existing conditions and it will also move health care into a 21st century. Uh, the current uh, situation with health care is unsustainable. Uh, the, the costs for health care have been growing uh, much higher uh, than uh, everything else and so we, we, we cannot just sit back and do nothing. Now there are lots of people with lots of different ideas and as was pointed out there are three committees and those bills will all have to be merged but I am confident that with uh, President Obama leading the way uh, the American people will have a a rehaul of health care and as the president has said if you like your current doctor and you like your current health care mm -hmm. you can keep it we just want to make sure that the 47 million Americans doesn't continue to grow and grow and that people are pushed out of the health care system okay and, and Republican Congressman Gingrey also with us I want to give you an opportunity uh, Congressman Gingrey to give us in about 45 seconds, what are you hoping a health care reform package would look like for the 46, roughly 47 million uninsured Americans? Well, when you look at the 47 million, you really have to peel back the layers of that onion. Uh, in fact, uh, 10 million of them are people who are eligible already for a safety net program such as Medicaid or a CHIP program. They just don't know it. We need an ombudsman to let them know that. Uh, 18 million of the uninsured are people making at least $50,000 a year, some $75,000 a year. They have just decided they don't want to be forced to purchase health insurance. Uh, and, and so there are maybe 10 or 15 uh, million that truly, uh, through no fault of their own, maybe pre-existing conditions, don't have health insurance. We want to make sure that they get that. We want insurance reform. The Republican side of the aisle definitely wants that. And we can affect that by, by equalizing the tax treatment, as an example. Let them get the same discounted health insurance as people get who are employee, employees of a large company. Uh, and we can create these uh, statewide in every state of the nation. Uh, 50 states have in high risk pools where the federal government and the states uh, are, are willing to put in money and supplements so that these people can afford health insurance and nobody is denied because of a pre-existing condition. I think the insurance companies have already essentially agreed to do that. Well, it sounds like some of the things that you just spelled out are some of the very things that the White House said that it wants, that no one would be who has pre-existing uh, situations would be denied and and congressman you also mentioned though however you know a lot of people say they don't want to be forced to purchase health care but talk to me a little bit more about that because it's a bit confusing when you've got a public health care plan that might be extended to uh, uninsured americans what do we mean by it would be forced and people wouldn't like the idea of being covered of course great question but let's get into the the, the part about if you like what you've got uh, you can keep it uh, the pledge from the president Certainly, that's not true uh, for the 10 or 11 million people who currently like Medicare Advantage under the Medicare program, where uh, things are, are covered like uh, hearing aids and, and dental care, 
uh, and, and uh, people have wellness opportunities, callbacks from a nurse practitioner that you don't get under traditional fee-for-service Medicare. Uh, that program is going to be cut by $175 billion. So uh, uh, those, those 10 million people uh, certainly are not going to get to keep what they okay, like. Okay, well, Congressman Engel, I'm going to let you respond to that quickly because this is the kind of stuff that starts to confuse people when they're either insured or uninsured and they want to know exactly what's at stake. I'll give you about 10 seconds to respond to uh, uh, um, that comment. Well, if anybody is going to uh, have cutbacks in their insurance, uh, we will make sure that these things are added to. So nobody is really going to suffer. The question is, do we just sit and do nothing, as I, my Republican friends seem to want to do, or trust the insurance companies, as my Republican friends seem to want to do? Okay. Or do we say that, that we need to get involved now because before we turn around, we'll have 60 and 70 million Americans uninsured and people will be afraid of losing their jobs and losing their insurance. Uh, the system is about to break down and we need to fix it. All right. I got some very specific questions gonna, about to come your way, Congressman, from Jaquita Williams, who is here in Atlanta. Uh, she is currently unemployed. She is has a pre-existing situation. Uh, she's a breast cancer survivor. Hooray on that. Yes, and at the same you. time, you are covered by COBRA. It's mm -hmm. very expensive. It and Laura Walker is also with us. She recently lost her job. She's unemployed. She does not have insurance. And she's trying to be very careful about everything. And that means giving up the horse riding that she loves to do because it's a dangerous sport and being uninsured. She doesn't want any catastrophic care to have to kick in. So, ladies, I'm going to allow you to talk to the congressman here, Jaquita, you first, uh, to express your concerns about health care reform. What do you want to see in a package? What confuses you about what we're hearing from lawmakers? Bottom line for me, I support the president in his health care reform. I do know that something needs to happen. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I had insurance, but I can also tell you that just because I worked and had insurance, it didn't cover everything. So there was medication that I had to still be responsible for. There were surgeries that I still had to be responsible for. So I think for me and for people who are like me, whatever this new plan is, is there such thing as the kind of insurance that covers everything where you're not responsible for paying thousands of dollars when you already feel like you're covered. Mm -hmm. So either one of so the... So how about Congressman Gingrey? Because earlier at the top you talked about not being denied insurance when you have a pre-existing condition. Perhaps Ms. you can respond to Jaquetta. Uh, Ms. Williams, absolutely. And, and your situation, of course, uh, after that COBRA runs out in 18 months, uh, you know, under current situation, it might be awfully hard for you to get uh, any kind of health insurance exactly. uh, coverage that you could afford if they would even let you have any coverage. Well, under my plan, under the Rep Republican plan, uh, the insurance companies would absolutely have to give you a policy uh, that was virtually standard rate, maybe 10 percent more, uh, that, that you could get that would cover those things, would cover those cancer drugs that you so desperately need. Uh, and that's part of insurance reform that we would insist on. And I think the insurance companies would, would be willing to do that. The reason so many young people don't sign up for health insurance is because if they've been in a program for a, co for a company for 25 years and all of a sudden they develop breast cancer or Alzheimer's disease or some chronic illness and they change jobs, then they can't change their insurance uh, policy. They can't get coverage. They should absolutely be able to get credible coverage because the insurance companies have done quite well on them over many years. So this is, again, reform of the insurance company. I think the insurance company is ready to do that. We can do that without turning everything over lock, stock, and barrel to the federal government. You know, in Great Britain, the five-year survival rate for breast cancer is much less than it is in this country, and that's because they deny some of these best uh, innovation and new cancer drug therapies, and, and, and that you don't want to be in that situation. All right, and Congressman, I'm going to interrupt you there. We're going to take a short break because I know, Congressman Engel, you too would want to be able to say you've got a plan that would mean no turning down people with pre-existing conditions. So where do we find common ground here right after this? Isn't it times like these that reminds us of what...